Welcome back to the channel everyone. Now we've seen how in the Sacro Corona in Ita the climate has never been too good, with chaos reigning since its inception and actually throughout its history. Constant instability is the name of the game when it comes to the Sacro Corona in Ita. Adding to these periods of uncertainty and especially instability have been the various feuds, but these are not exclusive to the Apulian Mafia. But the opposite applies to the Ndrangheta, which has always had a more stable setup, and especially a higher strength and continuity than the other criminal groups. And this has led it to be rarely challenged or undermined at its very core. Given its importance, and also its history, which is significantly longer than that of the Sacro Corona Unita, numerous feuds have taken place within the Ndrangheta over the recent past. Some of these have been so significant that they're even refer referred to as actual wars, while others have had a series of hostilities often separated by many years in between the various connected events that are part of a broader conflict. Mention has already been made of the historic Siderno feud, which took place in Locride and even went so far as to involve territories across the border, such as Canada. However, it's not the only one that has also had consequences outside of Italy. So, let's talk about the San Luca feud. Now, as mentioned, there is another clan war that had an impact even outside of Italy, and that is the San Luca Faida, or war. And that broke out in San Luca, the main town in the Aspromonte region of Calabria, which, of course, is a heavy Ndrangheta region. And it ended in Germany following the Duisburg massacre in 2007. Well, the feud erupted in an almost innocent way, one would say, following one of those scenes that you're likely to see in a Halloween party on an American movie. During the 1991 carnival, some young boys linked to the Strangio and Nirte clans threw eggs at the ARCI club, the Archi club run by the Pele Coast. The event happened again, but in this case, the opposing clan responded this time with violence. And this gave rise to the revenge that led to an explosion of gunfire and the killing of the first clan members. And since then, the clash has continued for a couple of years until the killing of some of the leaders of the Pele Votari clan. The intervention of Antonio Pele, who of course is the Ndrangheta peacemaker supreme, led to an interruption in the conflict that lasted about a decade, and then resumed again in 2006. However, the war reignited some time later, and there were killings that occurred in Germany, known as the Duisburg Massacre. And we'll spend more time on this and put out a separate video that goes deep into those events that led to the Duisburg Massacre, and of course to the backlash. But that event shocked Germany, and indeed the world, it had been a very violent murder by a criminal organisation that had always been underestimated in Germany and demonstrated the German authorities' inability to take any action. A murder of military style a long way from the Ndrangheta stronghold of Calabria. It was also remarkable that many of the violent attacks that occurred in the course of this war happened on major religious or social events like Christmas or Carnaval. And the San Luca War was not a unique one by any means. There were and are many more. So let's talk about another couple now. The Taurinova War is more traditional in its history. The reason that this particular war started is almost exclusively due to the simple desire of one gang to increase its control over the territory of another gang. The parties involved in this conflict were the Avignoni family of Giatrinoli on the one hand, holders of the monopoly over the territory, and the Neri family of Radicena on the other. Well, the first key event related to this feud was the death by overdose of Felice Zagari, a member of the Avignoni family. Now, he had brought narcotics from Vincenzo Maizano, who was close to the Neri clan. The death resulted in clear orders by Domenico Giovanazzo, head of the Avignoni clan, blocking all sales of drugs for all the Ndrangheta in the area. Now, of course, this decision was hard to sustain in a world that is fueled by drug trafficking. And Giovinazzo ended up, of course, unsurprisingly being assassinated, with Rocco Zagari taking the reins of the Giatrinoli family. Zagari, however, didn't rule for long, and he himself was killed, in turn, a year later. 
and the retaliation for his killing led to the so-called Black Friday, 3rd of May 1991. On that day, the Giatrinoli family murdered approximately 20 people who were linked to the Radicena family, the family behind Zagari's assassination. And this day was important even at the national level since the event was so prominent and so visible that of course it forced the government to respond with forceful measures. A pretty violent outcome for a territorial dispute and the overdose of a gangster. And finally we come to the Volpiano feud. Now most of the Andrangheta feuds, as you can guess, take place almost exclusively in Calabria. But there is one that instead took place in the northern part of Italy. Now, the two opposing families were the Marando family of Volpiano, based in Turin, and the Stefanelli family of the Ligurian region. Now, again, the fight between clans broke out over drugs, with the Marandos, who in this case could be considered the leaders in smuggling, thanks in part to their own dealings with the Turks, the Portuguese, and the Pakistanis. The war started after the killing of Francesco Marando, commissioned by Antonio Stefanelli, who was then murdered shortly thereafter on one of the Marando's properties. But you may ask, why did he go to the Marando's territory? Well, the reason is pretty simple. He was lured into a trap. His enemies had convinced him to go on the false basis of reaching a possible peace agreement to end the war. Which all goes to prove you don't become one of the world's leading crime syndicates without a few internal spats along the way. So that's it folks, do let me know if you're interested in hearing more about the Mafia and Nerangeta Wars as they are pretty fascinating. So until next time.